The message this morning is you will not suffer. You will not suffer. Suffering has ended in someone's life. Say, so I, I will not suffer. Say it and mean it. Say it one more time. Suffering is real and exemption is real. The world may suffer, but not you. In Isaiah 60, 1 and 2, but verse 2 precisely, it says, Arise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, verse 2 of Isaiah 60, and cross darkness the people. It's a cross, that means there will be so much darkness upon the earth. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Say, God's glory be seen upon me. Say it one more time. May God's glory be seen upon you in the name of Jesus. Looking at how the world is, you find that everybody is looking gloomy. Everybody is not happy. Many people are not happy. Many people are sad. Some are very depressed. They go to banks there for days. Not even money can come. But look at it. Is it a new thing? No. It has happened before. People not getting money from bank is not new. It has happened in the Bible. People going for 10,000 and they end up giving them 1,000. It's not new. People queuing and queuing and shouting, getting naked and they no money. It's not new. Frustration is not new. But you will never be a victim. People are frustrated, especially in Nigeria. People are very frustrated. True? The, the suffering in Nigeria is something else. But these things are not new. They have happened before. He said, there's nothing new under the sun. So it's not new. What is happening? Let me show you from Genesis chapter 47, verse 15. When money failed in the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came unto Joseph and said, give us bread, for why should we die in our presence for money failed? So money failing is not new. Nine are not available is what? It has happened before. You went to a bank, you have 150,000, they are giving you 3,000. It's not, so it's not even available. It's not new. It's not what? But here what God said, he said, in famine, it shall redeem thee. May God redeem you today. He said, in destroy a family, that shall laugh. Job 5, 22. May you laugh right now. He said, darkness shall cover the earth and grow darkness and his glory shall be risen upon you. I decree no matter the hardship in the land, I command you that is hearing me, God, change your story. I'm speaking from my heart. No matter difficulties, may God give you a testimony. No matter how the situation is, may your case be different. Amen. If you are the one I'm speaking to, say amen like a child of God. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I hate to see children of God suffer. You will not suffer. Amen. I say you will not suffer. Amen. In the church in the wilderness, every evil that happened in Egypt did not happen to them. In Exodus chapter 11, 4 to 7, but verse 5, and all the first one in the land of Egypt shall die. If everybody that was dead in their houses, but for the children of Israel, not one person died. In the midst of challenges where you are in any part of the world, you will not bury anyone in your house. Yeah. They will not bury you. Yeah. Dead is not funny. Oh, no. I decree none of us will ever die as I'm talking. Yeah. Listen, I'm speaking, dead is not what? I didn't draw for my. I know a Ghanaian footballer who they say crash. I it's not my brother, but I didn't know where tears began to draw from my eyes. Now listen, death is not funny. If you have ever lost anybody around you, you will know how painful it is. I got, the Turkish earthquake, he was amongst them. I didn't know what compassion from me. 
it's not my brother, but I couldn't know when. I, I was not looking at tears, and tears were going to drop. Now listen, if, if you have ever had compulsion, you won't let anybody around you. Have you ever lost anybody around you before? You will know how painful it is. But today is the last day anyone around us will die. You too will not die. I decree no matter the nation you are, I speak as a man sent by God. You will not die. Nobody around you will die. He accepted them from untimely dead. What was happening in Egypt? So here. The Exodus chapter 11, 4 to 7. Number six, collapse of the economy. Collapse of what? Exemption from collapse of the economy. In Exodus chapter 9, 3 to 6, 4 and 6, and the Lord shall severe between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt, and there shall nothing die of all that is in the throne of Israel. Are you understand now? Verse 6. And the Lord did that thing on the morrow, and all the cattle of Egypt died, but of the cattle of the throne of Israel died not one. The cattle of Egypt could not collapse of business because that was the capital. Israelites were not victims of economic collapse. Businesses flourished. This is what? Why Jesus are going? They say when there's a casting down, then I shall say there's what? A lift up. I don't know what is going down in your other two business. Your own business will be going up. Yes. Shout your loud amen. Yes. Our bi- salvation is inclusive will be going up. Yes. Say I will go up. No matter what's happening in the land, I will go up. Say it one more time. And number seven, hardship. Number seven is what? It will differentiate you from hardship. There was financial bankruptcy, hardship, famine in Egypt, but the children of Israel in Goshen had money. Had what? They had money. When there was hardship, they had money. In Genesis 47, 15 to 27, and when money fell in the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan, all Egyptians came to Joseph and said, Give us bread, for why should we die in the presence for money failed? 27. Look at 27. Let's do it together. I want to go. And Israel dwelled in the land of Egypt, in the country of Goshen, and they had possession therein and grew and multiplied what? They, they had possession when money failed. That shall be your testimony. Do you believe? Do you believe? When money was failing, Israel had what? Possession. He said, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, but for your sakes he became poor, that through his poverty I might be what? I decree. No matter the failure in your land, you will keep prospering. That's 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9. When men are cast down, then that shall say what? Then that shall say what? Look at it. When men are cast down, then thou shalt say. So you don't say what is happening. Stop saying, oh boy, oh boy, no money. Oh. Don't say so. The Bible says, don't say so. Don't say, guys, are broke. No money for Nigeria. Don't say so. Say, when men are cast down, then thou shalt say. That's what? Say, my own case will be different. Thou shalt not say what is happening in Nigeria. Thou shalt say what is written. Listen. When men are cast down, then thou shalt say. There's a lifting up and save the humble person. It takes humility to save God's world. You know, the natural Nigeria, for instance, we say, things are tough. No Naira. They don't say no Naira. They say there's plenty of Naira. There's plenty of money. How many know there's plenty of money? Is, do you have money? Do you, the dash shall say what God is saying. Don't say what is happening. Say what is written. Then you have what is written in your life. So I hear. Mm? And let me say this to you. No matter what is happening in the land, don't follow what is happening not to practice what God is saying. Don't stop your covenant practice because of hardship. Don't stop your covenant practice because of what? If you stop your covenant practice, it will stop the blessing. Now hear what God said. In Deuteronomy 8, 18. He said, and thou, but thou shall remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which is sworn to thy fathers as it is. A covenant is an agreement between you and God. Between you and what? With terms and benefits. It's an oath sworn by God with a 
vowed it that, look, if you do this, I will do this. I said, as long as this earth remains, the seed and harvest shall not cease. He said, no matter the hardship in the land, if you plant seed and commit God's integrity, he will make a way where there is no way. So here, that Genesis 8, verse 22. Now God is saying, in times of hardship, many people don't know what to do. Now listen. You look at, you know, in mathematics, you look at an example and solve your own what? Problem. The easiest way to solve mathematics is to look at what? The example and solve your own problem. There was hardship in the time of Abraham. In the time of who? In Genesis chapter 12 and verse 10. It said, and there was famine in the land and Abraham went down to, into Egypt to sojourn. For the famine was grievous in the world. The land. Look at chapter 13 verse 1. And Abraham went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and lot with him and his son. And read verse 2 together, one to go. Read verse 2, one to go. The time when there was hardship, Abraham was rich. Look at Isaac. Genesis 26, verse 1. Shall we read it again? Genesis 26, verse 1, one to go. Which famine again? After Abraham's famine, there was another famine. Okay. I find the lamb. Beside the first famine, that was in the days of who? So famine is not new. Look at verse. A head goes one in chapter 2, verse 2 and verse 3. And verse 12. You read together. One to go. Verse 12. One to go. And I, then Isaac sowed. When did he sow? In famine? In famine? In famine? Why should he sow in famine? This is the principle. It is in hard times you change your situation by sowing. Look at verse 13. And the man waxed what? And went and grew until he became verse 14. And the, he had what? He had possession and the fleece. They will envy you. I said they will envy you. I said they will envy you. In Jacob's time, Genesis 42 verse 2, and he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in where? Get you down there and buy for us. He didn't say go and beg. He said, There's hardship, but go and buy. That means money was uh, when there was famine in Israel. So here. And he had surplus money. That even when money was put in the sack, he said, Take it back. Genesis 43. Now look at the time of Joseph. So you, you see, every generation, no one escaped it. True? So what is happening to you is not worth it's on you. Genesis 41. 53. If you want to hear Jacob, all right, 43, 1 to 12 and 15. Look at 41, 53. And the seven years of plenteousness that was in the land of Egypt were what? And the verse 54. And the seven years of what? That was that means famine. Began to come. According to Joseph as what? And the famine was in all the lands. But in all the land of it, there was what? Look at verse 56 and 57. And the famine was over all the face of what? And Joseph opened all the stars. Yeah. It happened in Abraham. Happened where? Isaac. Happened when? Jacob. Happened when? Happened even in your own time now. True? So it's not new. Tell anybody it's not new. Say, bro. Sister, no be new thing. There's nothing new under the heavens. He said there was famine, and the famine was so in the land of Egypt, 57. And all the countries came into Egypt to Joseph to buy a corn because that the famine was so so in all lands, just the way it is now. You go anywhere, hardship, go anywhere, what? Prices of things have increased all over the world. All over the world, prices have increased. Everywhere in the world, things have increased. So it is not a problem of Nigeria. It's a global problem. There was hardship to a point in 2 Kings 4. A man of God took his children as collateral. Read your Bible. 1 to 7. The man. Look, poverty has no respect for anointing. 
the man of God, he, he was so hard. He gave, you know the way you give house now for collateral. He gave his two sons as collateral. He said, look, if I can't pay this debt, take my two children. And he died with the, the debt. So the wife inherited the debt. I've lost we have family inherited debt of person. The wife inherited. So they came to carry the children before the woman cried to Elisha. And told Elisha, I said, okay, chapter 4, 1 to 7. I said, Elisha, Elisha said, what is the problem? He said, ah, they will come to carry my two children, your fellow servant of God. Left as problem. That you are a man of God <laughs> does not mean that if things are not working, uh, are men of God accepted in Nigeria? Eh? Those who are not practicing. They are also part of the problem, so they don't get money now. That they are not, you can't use annoyance to cover it. If bank, you know, can you go to bank and be a pastor? Man will look at you and say, be pastor and so. Now listen, but you, you, your case will be different. Amen. She was indebted and Elisha was used as a man of God. Today, I decree you out of every debt. Amen. Some of you, you know that because of no money, you are buying in credit, buying in credit, buying in credit, buying in credit. Even as you're living service now, your heart is flying. Whether they, they will come to us. Let me show you something. Look at 1 Kings 17, 9 to 16. A man of God called Elijah. Called who? He said, Arise, get to Zarephath, which belonged to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. This is talking about God was speaking. You read verse 10. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. You read verse 12. It was so tough that she said, I will do, and me and my son will die. You see the hardship? That was the level of. Just like Nigeria, where people are getting naked because of no money. It's not new. Pashi was so severe in the land. It was so what? This man said she wants to die. And let her say to her, fear not. Say, Tell everybody, don't be afraid. Say, man, I refuse to be afraid. He said, go and do as thou hast said, but make for me thereof a little cake first and bring it to me. And after that, make for thee and thy son. You read verse 14. Spoke the word. I'm speaking God's word to you. No matter the hardship, things will turn for you. Yeah. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her son did it many days. This is the finally want to go. Listen, Kevin. When it comes to God, he walks with principles. What what? God wanted to turn that woman's story. He sent a prophet. He sent who? Now listen. She was not the one who sustained the prophet. The prophet went there for the rescue mission. Went on the what? He was the one who went to rescue her from the dungeons of hunger. God took care of him in the brook called Chiret. So if God wanted to feed Elijah, he would have fed him. But say, Elijah, just why I'm coming on the rescue mission now to you. Two of us. Am I talking? It is what I speak, God will confirm over you. So I am not here just because I want to talk. I'm here because I'm on a rescue mission. And I decree, no matter what is happening, you will never be a victim. In the name of Jesus. So I will not be a victim. I believe the word of God. Now hear what God said. Believe the Lord your God. It shall be what? Believe his prophet. So shall you what? Your prosperity is tied to me. It's what I say, God will confirm. Listen, if I keep quiet now, you can't prosper. But I decree from today, this will be better for you. Yeah. Every time God wants to prosper his people, he brings a man of God to speak over their lives. Is that true? And this difficult time for the world will be your best time on earth. Yeah. 
Shout aloud, amen, if you believe it. Shout you believe in amen in the name of Jesus. In Psalms 24, 9 to 12, hear what the Bible says here. We see not our signs. There is no more any prophet. Neither is there any among us. Is there among us any that know it? He said, what are the prophets? If you don't have prophets, there's a problem in any land. If there's a prophet what? In any land. Oh Lord, how long shall the, how long shall the reproach? Shall the enemy blaspheme thy name forever? Why we just down thy hand, even the right hand, pluck it out of thy bosom? Verse 2 finally. For God is my king of all, walking salvation in the midst of the earth. Prophets are agents of signs and wonders. When they speak, I don't mean somebody just standing to me. No, a man sent by God, who when he speaks, God confirms. With all humility, I mean, I'm not, I didn't call myself a prophet. He ordained me by election of grace. And I decree today, by the hand of God, Nigeria and you will be rescued. The country where you are will be rescued. If you believe the same man, you will never go down. Amen. This nation where we are transmitting from will not go down. Amen. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Yes. I command you rescued in the name of Jesus. Amen. Prophets are agents of what? Signs and wonders. He said, believe the Lord your God. He will establish you. But believe his prophet for you to prosper. So your prosperity in hardship, check the whole Bible. There was nowhere in the Bible where anyone ever prospered without a prophet. Read your Bible. Israel prospered through Moses. Israel prospered through who? Jesus brought prosperity to Israel. True? Every prosperity, a vessel must be used. I prospered through Edebo. Edebo prospered through Archbishop Mercedesa. You can never prosper in this kingdom without a prophet. In fact, when there's hardship, he sends them. Your ability to recognize their matters. Not everyone is a prophet. I don't know somebody seeing people say, you see Baba Tins, that's not a prophet. That's a, that's a bushman. A prophet looks at things not going well and then speak things to turn. Are you hearing me now? Prophet is not somebody telling you your problem. That's not a prophet. That's a bushman. A prophet, things are not going the way they should go. Then they speak. God's counsel and things. That's a prophet. You know, we, in this part of the world, we believe that prophet is somebody with dreadlock. That's a reggae star. That's a, it's a Bob Marley. It's a what? It's a Bob Marley. Is Bob Marley a prophet? No, no. Somebody having that, that is a Bob Marley. So you can call it Bob Marleyan. All those people who are, who are having dreadlock, they are what? Bob Marleyans. That's not a... That's not a Prophet, not somebody carrying bell with a white gown. He said, I see the prophet. Go, that one uh, is a Bob Mali. <laughs> so now that is like Bob Mali, is a Bob Malian. <laughs> he said, What? <laughs> Bob Malian. He said, hey, Bob Malian. I can't say. Don't, we, we, people have been saying, A prophet is God's mouthpiece who speaks God's counsel and comes to pass. So I decree. Your time of prosperity has come. Yeah. This is the time you will prosper. He yeah. said, believe the Lord your God shall be, believe his prophet, so shall he what? To prosper, conos abundance, supernatural supplies, so here. It shall be so to you. Yeah. If that woman never gave what she had, God would have had anything to bless her. Hope you know. The moment she released what she had, God used this as a point of comfort. When God wanted to bless loaves, he had to use the small five loaves and two fishes in the hands of the young boy in John 6 verse 9. That was when God could multiply. So if God will bless you in the hard time, there must be a point of comfort. Listen, that's why we miss it. If there's no point of contact, there'll be nothing to bless so it's in the time of hardship, you don't say, oh God, you know, you have to do that. There are not a place. There must be a point of, it is that point of contact God will use. There was hardship for children. God lost everybody. So he had to use Jesus as a point of 
contact, the Almighty God, to get us back. So there must be a point of corner financially before you can come out of the hardship in the land now. Do you understand it? Now, listen. I know the game. That in hardship is when you increase your offering. It's very funny. In hardship, person should reduce offering. True? True? A farmer who wants big harvest in droth, should he plant more or should he plant less? Simple. Do not increase my offering today. I know the game. I know what? I know because this time things are tough for the world, so I increase my offering to get more money. And my money is not dependent on Nigeria. Something happened sometime when some people began to make noise. I said, God, I want to prove that I, this thing I teach works. So I don't depend. Somebody flew from London who has never met me, never met me, flew from London, came, dropped money here and went back. He said, do you know why I did it? So that they will know that you are not dependent on their wretched pocket. As I don't, he said, I'll prove, I'll prove that. The man flew just from London to drop off it. That was the first time he met me. Gave me the biggest offering ever at that time. No member gave me such offering. He dropped it and went back the following day. So your blessing is not tied to your environment. You see, no way. When I did Nigeria, who will come bless me? God does not work like that. Just do your path. Leave God's path to Him. As long as this earth, put your seed first. Allow him to bring the harvest. Where you bring the harvest is not your business. Just put your own seed. This is not the time to say, is she the way you hand? If you reduce your offering, you reduce your blessing. Why should I increase offering now? I know the system. I know what? I know the principle. It's not the time to increase offering. It's the time to reduce offering. In the natural, true. But I increase it because I want my harvest to do what? Increase. So here. Follow me, oh. I didn't increase my offering because money. I had to collect cash from my wife. So don't think that I increased my offering because uh, I have money to play with. No. But I know the principle. Physical cash was too plenty. So I told my wife to give me. And you want to borrow money from a woman, you know what I mean now. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't borrow, I collected it. Uh, but I can't borrow from my own wife. You can't borrow from your own flesh. But I tell her, say, nah, out of the two, I give you five some. <laughs> 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 if you put over money, you go. <laughs> oh, I wonder men where they depend on their wife. How did they try? Oh, over money. She go calculate, calculate, calculate. You say, now nah, this one I get to. Now nah, this one I get to. Over <laughs> money, nah, have money. Oh, the man money, nah, have money. Who money is what? Man's money. No man should depend on woman's pocket too. But when you give her to you, can sometimes collect. Like that, another, another physical another was very well. I said, my wife, find me some. Find me some. He said, nah, nah, small. I said, bring her first. <laughs> <laughs> I have never in my life looked for cash. This is the first time I look for physical cash. I have money. But I'm not a poor man. But I increased my offering. So I gave, I decided to make seven, seven figures for each service. Because I want big harvest. I want what? Big harvest. Big. Big harvest. I will tell you the testimony by next week. In fact, today's time I'll tell you. You go see today, boom. I know the game. Follow me, oh. If you don't follow me, very soon you will remember, oh, all the, oh, no, go reach me, oh. My harvest is not tied to Nigeria. I'm a very funny man. I know this, you know. Your harvest is not tied to your environment. It's tied to God. But let me close on this note. This season is also a season of wisdom. It's a season of what? Why do I say so? It's not a season where you live an extravagant life. Knowing full well how the world is, be prudent. Be what? Wisdom demands that you sow, you live a prudent life. This is not the time to live a wasteful life. Spend wisely. Spend what? You can't be born in gas, what they call fuel. Drive, wah, wah, wah. Use phone to do most things. Keep your transport for church and for work. If you're going anywhere, it should be something that will bring profit. You don't visit people at this time when transport money is very well. Take phone calls, so why are you there? You talk and stop. 
You only go for business and you go to church. Are you going to say now? You leave all the things that are not bringing profit. Everything you want to spend money for should be something that's an investment. Now listen carefully. Don't say this period, I want to buy. I want to do this. Say, I want to invest. What do you say? Don't say, I want to buy this. I want to buy this. This is not the time to buy. Buy. This is the time you need to invest. Every money you will spend now, ask me, is it an investment? Or is bye-bye? There's time for everything. This is not the time to buy many things. This is the time to invest. You know why? What you invest today will bring you profit tomorrow to enjoy life. The thing you are trying to enjoy now, if you invest it, it will bring you the profit to enjoy. So why not first and foremost what? Invest. I didn't travel in this ministry for nine years, not because there was no money, but we were investing. We are what? Before I started traveling, I made sure there was enough investment. Now I can travel every day. You have not settled down. You started working newly. You have started traveling around everywhere. Calm down. Calm what? I know a man who flew to fly first class when I was flying economy. Today, where we fly, I see him in the economy. And I, 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 say, I just pinch myself. I say, how can this man be flying economy and fly first class? You know why? He never invested. You never what? The first money he got, he began to fly. Now he's flying economy. It's better to fly economy today and then fly first class tomorrow than the first first class today and fly economy tomorrow. The wise don't spend their money now. They invest now. This period is time for investment. Cut down on everything you are doing in life. Cut down. That's wisdom. That's what? That's wisdom. Cut down. Have a budget. Have a what? Have a budget for everything. Have a... Spend according to budget, not according to availability of money. The prodigal son spent all and it was in want. Luke 15 verse 14. 11 to 32. Look at Proverbs 18, verse 9, and I close. Read this. One to go. Proverbs 18, verse 9. Let's close. One to go. Even if you are walking, he said, don't be a waster, otherwise it will be useless. Pleasure with that limit will result in penury. Pleasure has a cure, and the cure to pleasure without limit is being prudent. You know what? Do you know the rich who are hardworking don't spend money anyhow? How many of you know? How many of you know? Check very well. Those who really work hard for money, who are have money, don't spend money anyhow. Do you know? But those who don't work, do you know they spend money anyhow? Check. I've been around people who don't work, and they spend money more than you have the money. I've seen... I've given somebody, domestic staff, so not domestic staff, it's somebody who does, I don't want to be very nice, so you don't know him. A young man, the wife pushed wheelbarrow to sell all this, their mama port, mama port is mama port. Those of you, this mommy, then port. <laughs> and city council arrested her because she was selling on the road. And when I had it, my nature, I said, ah, he came to me, said, sir, my wife has been locked for four days. I said, you mean four days? Where is it? Police station because she was orchid. I said, okay, good. I sent people from the office to go and release her. The I said, you know what? Since she's working and they're hard, take this one million. Go and get a shop. Let your wife sell. Now, after I gave him the one million, a person whose salary is 50,000, he went and bought television. <laughs> he went and bought generator. Now, we don't seem to bring any money. No. I didn't know. He thought that I forgot it because, you know, so that they think that people forget. So after, after about one year, he may be hearing me where he is now. He came and was complaining to somebody. I said, ask him that I gave him one million. He didn't tell the person I gave him one million. I said, ask him that your papa gave you one million. So they asked him, say, papa gave me, say, ah, uh, he didn't go buy TV. He didn't go buy there. He said, he can buy. I said, what, has, what would TV bring back? What would Jericho bring back? Because he's not work out for the money. If it was money work out, you would never buy a TV. Check people who don't work for money, their priorities are wrong. Their priorities are 
walk, walk, do I walk? You will know how to spend money. I walk home. When you walk like me, believe me, you calculate your head. Go and meet the dango days. Meet the rich. They don't spend money anyhow. Except those who stole money. If you didn't steal your money, you'll, left, you'll be prudent. But if you have a brother or sister who is not working, ah, now ladies will give me this one, this is my money. Now this is my money, put it from my hand, this is my money. See, my brother will be millionaire. He can't give me 500,000, 500,000. Now you give her the money. You are you handicapped. This time is not a time to waste again. Everybody cut your coat according to availability of cloth, not according to your size, because your size will be bigger than the cloth. Rise to your feet. Cut your coat according to what? Not your size. Cut your coat according to the availability of cloth. Your size may be bigger than your cloth. Be prudent. Be what? This church is prudent. I hope you know that. If we are not prudent, if we are not prudent, I would have bought jet before cathedral. You don't know? If I'm not prudent, I'll buy jet before cathedral. This church can buy jet, but we have not free cathedral. True? Is it wisdom for me to buy jet? No. That's why it's prudent. Because the cathedral is taking billions. Taking what? We have to finish. Otherwise, I can just say, hey, you guys, I'm going to fly now. I'm going to fly now. I'm going to fly. I don't buy a jet. Whether you, you can finish or not, I just fly from here to Amsterdam, Amsterdam to New York, New York. I just come back and say, hey, somebody shout, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just come and say, somebody there. I say, mom, ma you know, that's what they say, mama. You know, we just came back from Houston, Texas. He said, Shepard Shad, yeah, yeah. I show you my gold watch. I say, no, no, ma'am, we just bought this watch in Frankfurt. Glory to God, hey. <laughs> then the members of Golu say, so our pastor, so all this money, what would they give? Now, so they take up. <laughs> you know why people give in this church? It's because I'm very prudent. We talk humility. I'm very what? Last year, you gave money. Don't you see the churches we built? If I fly, you won't build one church. One church, you won't build. Look, to waste is very simple. Oh. To waste is very what? Yeah, to waste is very simple. <laughs> if you live extravagant life, you know wastage. It's very simple. This is not the time to live extravagant life. Caught down. Caught down. Caught down. Because the cash itself is not flowing like that. So caught down. Wisdom is profitable to lift your right hand and say, Father, I receive wisdom to live in line with your word. I'll put to practice all this I've heard in the name of Jesus. All that your son has spoken will also come to pass in my life. I will not suffer. He will prosper me. Now I'm going to take a prophetic word. Now listen. In this prophetic word, look at me. Come, this man, you on white. Stand here. Bring something for me to cover him. Listen, everybody, listen. This is how, this is how Satan has, economy, everything has finished your life like this. Come. Come closer. Can this man go anywhere? Grow darkness. This is grow darkness. Oh boy, he go if you go anywhere? No way. This life, life is useless. I mean, this is like what I'm close with. This man now, if you tell him to go anywhere, he can't go anywhere. Whatever has beclouded you like this, covered your life, covered you no glory today. As I demonstrate with this man, that's it will happen. He said, arise and shine for your light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. From today, I command every darkness. Clear in the name of Jesus. <laughs> glory of God. Rise upon you in the name of Jesus. God bless. Your shoulder has changed. I speak over your life. The same way I use it for demonstration. Everything that beclouded your life brought hardship, difficulty. God, remove it now. <laughs> glory. Put your hand this way. I speak glory in the name of Jesus upon you in the name of Jesus. Pray 30 seconds. Glory is upon my life. Pray in the 30 seconds. upon me. In Jesus' name. Now hear me. 
I will never say anything to, to impress you. God said to me, speak over them, that's all. I heard God, the way he says to me. He says, speak over them. And if you speak over them, that's all I will do. Now I speak over you. In the midst of this hardship, be blessed in the name of Jesus. You will not suffer. You will not be a victim of evil. No matter what is happening, your case will be different. Rise and shine. Rise and prosper. Be blessed in the name of Jesus. You will win in every race. You will win in every race. You will win every race. You will win every race. In the name of Jesus. God will make a way for you. No matter the hardship, He will make a way for you. This will turn. This will get better. You will rise and shine in the name of Jesus. You know what he said to me? He said, my son, just speak over them. He said to me, speak over them. That's all I need you to do. Whatever I declare, even as I've declared now, it be done in your life. You will not suffer. You will not suffer. You will not suffer. You will not suffer. In Jesus' mighty name, give him thanks and praise. Now, the prophetic with David Ibiomi. All that God has for you come to pass in your life. I lift my hand. If Moses lifted his hand and God answered him, I'm greater than Moses. I lift his hands to you and I pronounce you blessed. And I decree you blessed. This week, go with a blessing. May the blessing speak over you in the name of Jesus. Where others are suffering, you'll be saying, things are better for me. Anyone who came sick, you'll pronounce healed. In Jesus' mighty name.